What's going on everybody? So today I'm going to be looking at the FIO D3 Taishan, or however the heck you say that. This is a budget digital to analog converter and it's available on Amazon as well as a few other places online. Now the FIO series of audio products are very popular on the internet and I actually did a review on the E10 which is a USB digital to analog converter. That ended up being pretty well built and it was very affordable for the performance you get out of it, so I'm kind of on the same level of expectations with this product. On the top here, we can see the various inputs and outputs. They're all nicely labeled in typical FIO fashion. And we've also got a couple of LEDs. So first we've got our coax in. So this is one of the input options, and it's actually selectable with a switch that we'll look at on the bottom. Next is power in, which is DC 5 volts, and that is powered by a USB plug. Next we've got our optical in, which I suspect is the biggest use case for this product since it's uh, not exactly tri trivial to convert optical into RCA out. We've got a couple of LEDs, so power and lock, and then our outputs, left and right, and a line out. And in typical FIO fashion, it's a aluminum extruded case. These are actually acrylic, little acrylic front panels. So onto the back, we can see our switch there that changes between the optical and coaxial input. And we have a nice sticker which says set the TV to PCM output. Kind of an ugly sticker, but I think it's sort of an afterthought. And model number D3K, along with some FCC and CE approval labels. We can see the aluminum extrusion here with those ridges, as well as the acrylic front and back panels, which actually look really nice, I have to say. As for what's holding it together, it's basically just eight screws on the front and back. So I'm gonna get taking these out right now. Okay, so I've gotten the case off. I actually only needed to pull one of the front panels off, which was a nice, uh, nice surprise. And first thing I can see here is, ooh, the same sort of flux residue that is present on some of the other FIO products, such as the E10, which is clearly from hand soldering of through hole components. Not gonna kill anything, but it really wouldn't be hard to wash off. Come on, guys. The only thing worth noting on this side, really, is the small slide switch. This actually pokes through with the case, and a piece of little piece of plastic guides it through to that switch on the outside of the case. So here's all the good stuff, and wow, is there a lot of good stuff here. We've got three major chips, along with a lot of surface mount passives. Holy cow. And in typical FIO fashion, I'm very impressed with the density of the design. It still appears to be a two-layer PCB, and they do fit all of this stuff in there, as well as the routing for it, so that's very impressive. On the edges, we just have our large connectors, so coax input, USB input, our digital input. Now these are pretty interesting because this actually looks like it has the receiver for the digital audio in inside the part. Those are usually a coupled fiber type. We've got our line out connector and of course our RCAs. This first one and the biggest one here is a Cirrus Logic CS8416. This is going to be a 192 kHz digital audio receiver and its basic job is to take the digital signals coming through the coax or the optical line and it converts them to a serial signal actually. It takes the digital signal and we can see this matched resistor network here which feeds into our next small surface mount package. So this looks like an MSOP8. Now this is actually going to be another Cirrus Logic chip, but this is a Cirrus Logic CS4344 digital to analog converter, which takes the serial signal created by the main digital audio chip and converts it to the analog signal, which then can be driven up to line level or RCA output level. This is going to be a 24-bit D to A. So this is actually a really good chip, and it's very popular in these lower-cost digital-to-analog converters. It uses a Delta Sigma along with a switched cap digital-to-analog converter for the outputs, and it's a stereo output, so two channels, which is well-matched to the stereo input coming in from our digital audio transceiver. This last chip here is a general purpose Texas Instruments op amp. It's a dual op amp and it's in a SO8 package. There's not really too much going on here except for this is obviously the line level driver. Now we've got some assorted goodies here. So the two LEDs for the power and the lock 
And those are just driven by a little bit of logic in here. You can see a diode coming on there. We have what's most likely a MOSFET right there. And those are likely just driven by uh, random signals or obviously the power rail. So overall, my thoughts on this product are in line with the main thoughts that I have about FIO. It's good quality, it's a great price, and it's got a very well thought out design. Just the fact that they can cram this many chips and passives into such a small area, along with the large through-hole connectors is really impressive. And as always, they do a good job making sure that the audio coming out of the product sounds just as good as you would expect. So for the price, I think it's a great buy. Like I said, the solder flux residue on the back, that's a characteristic trait of FIO products, but it doesn't impact the quality or the operation of the product at all. So overall, a good buy, and it definitely sounds great in the system as well. That's really all I've got for this teardown, so it's pretty simple. This was a pretty straightforward product with only a couple of things on the board. As always, if you have any questions, do let me know. If I made a mistake, feel free to correct me. I'm always open to hearing what people have to say. And of course, let me know what you'd like to see in the future for these teardowns.